Hi everyone, this is Hafa Benkati at the Riverfront Art Gallery, where I'm a curator, but I'm also an art educator. And in this video, we're gonna be learning how to make this teeny tiny little book. You may need a magnifying glass to really get a close up look at it, but this is a beautiful little book that ties and inside it has painted pages. It's just adorable and cute. And I'm also going to be showing in a later video how to turn this teeny tiny book into a necklace. Here's what you need today. Some good glue. I like using glitter glue. Two pieces of cardboard, one and a half inches by one and a half inches. Two strips of colorful paper. This is painted paper one and a half inches wide and ten and a half inches long. You're also going to need a book cover paper. Here's another painted paper and it's helpful to have a bone folder to help make creases in the pages, a ruler to measure, and two pieces of scrap cloth or string or ribbon to tie your book closed. So enjoy the video and if you've got all your supplies together, let's get to it. Okay, welcome everybody. Nice to see you here. I'm very excited about today's workshop. There's two really exciting projects and there's a finish up from last week. These are the watercolor papers that we bound together here at the top with a glue binding. And this is the cardstock or heavy paper that we're putting. There's the little channel. And this is what we're gluing to our watercolor papers. So what you're going to do is just continue with the glue along the top. You don't need a lot for this. Just a nice little strip along. And then you're going to take this piece and you're going to fold it over kind of press it down so that it's really sticking to the glue and then you've got a nice cover for your journal so the cover will stay because the glue is only at the top you should still be able to tear out your pages if you want to or you could leave them as one book so that's how that's gonna work. Easy peasy. Okay, so that's that project. And I hope now that you know how to bind your watercolor papers, you will continue to make your own watercolor journals because then you can use whatever kind of papers you want. Okay, so putting that away, getting out the next project, I said that I would show some options for traveling, making your own watercolor kits for traveling. So I have a couple of things going on here, very exciting. So this is just an old watercolor case. I took out the empty pieces and this is a watercolor pen, watercolor brush that you can fill with water and carry with you. That channel fills up with water. And then this one, it's very easy. You just give it a press and a little squeeze, the water will come out. And so I've made my own palette here. I have watercolors. Let me just show you really quick how the watercolor comes. So watercolors generally come in these tubes. They generally come in these tubes. Let me see if I can hold this up. And they're kind of a thick goo. And you can buy these half pans. Half pans are these little plastic pans that you can then fill with your watercolor I like to put a piece of um, magnetic tape on the bottom 
And when you put that piece of magnetic tape, it will stick to this metal case. So it has to be a metal case for this to work. But then you can just keep your favorite colors. You can refill them when they're empty. So that's one way to do it. And this brush fits inside. Then you have your own personalized case. This is another one that you find a lot on eBay. And because these are magnetic, I can hold this up. My watercolors aren't going to go anywhere. And I can make my own personalized case. So that's another one using an old watercolor, kind of a school case. And then if you want to travel, there's some handy dandy things that you can do. I recently got this box from a Salvation Army, and there's a couple of things in here that are really handy if you're traveling. You could have, I believe they make these water flow brushes in a mini version, so you could have a mini version, um, but I've got my sponge in here. I've got my tiny little bucket of water, so you can fill this with water and take it with you wherever you go. You could also fill this with paint if you're doing acrylic paint, but I do mine with water because it's just a small amount of water. And then I use one of the mini Altoid containers to put three basic primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, because with red, blue, and yellow, you can make any color that you need. And then this is just a little mixing palette. So you can take any kind of a plastic lid and use that as a mixing palette. You could glue them here to the lid and have a mixing palette. So if you do this, that's a nice little case for traveling. And then an even smaller case for traveling is this one where I have taken a little tiny plastic container and on this plastic container, I've got some little mini sheets of watercolor in case you wanna paint little mini, little teeny tiny watercolors. And then I have this, this is a palette, kind of the same idea where you can take your liquid watercolor, squirt it onto a piece of plastic and then using your water flow brush, this will last a whole during a whole watercolor session. You can just activate it with some water. Yellow. I have a little bit of black on my brush, so it's coming out. So yeah, you have enough on there that you could you could paint and of course i haven't even watered these down you could water these down in a palette so that's another way to do it that's a piece of acetate by the way so that would give you a teeny tiny and you could even do many pieces of acetate oh look my blue right there okay so that's the last idea for a traveling watercolor case Okay, so I hope that inspires you and helps you be able to travel with your watercolors. I'm gonna move on to our next project, which is the teeny tiny little book. So here is the book that we're gonna make today. This is just an old fabric scrap. So here's the book and the cover of the book is just a painted page. So this, those are the end papers. There's page one, page two, three, four, five, six, seven and my ties and when I'm done I can tie that up and I have one more to show you 
Here's another one. It's even tinier. You, you really could make these as tiny as you like. This is a piece of sari scrap. The cover, there's the end paper. And the inside are just gel printed papers, kind of the pieces that aren't the greatest scrap you might not want to use for collage, but when they're teeny tiny, they become beautiful in a small little book. So there's the little book. Okay, let's go. Here's what I have. I have a paper for the cover, two pieces of cardboard for the cover. I've got my pages right here. And I think what I'm missing is the ties. No, nope, here are my ties. Here are my two ties. Okay, so here we go. Um, you want to start with your strip of paper. And I see that the light is really bright. I'm going to try and cover it a little. I'm going to try and not cover the lens. See if it makes a difference. It's a little better. Let me double up the tape. I'm putting scotch tape over the light on the camera. It's a little better. Yeah, that feels a little better. Okay, so you're going to take your strip. You're going to first, oh, I've got my bone folder. You're going to first fold it in half. And th this is why I said size is not the most important thing. Yours may be a different size. The important thing is that when you're folding, make sure that you're even. Make sure you're even on both sides. Take your bone folder, slide it down. Okay. And I'm just double checking. I'm making sure that I'm even. I seem to be even. One more press. Then. For me, this is the easiest way to do it. Now that I've got it in half, I'm going to take my next page, fold it to the middle, make sure that it's even, both top and bottom, and fold it that way. And now I've got two sections to the right. And now that I've got the two sections, I'm going to divide this one in half and this one in half. So I'm taking my half, I'm putting it up to the middle, right up to the middle line. I'm making sure that I'm even top and bottom. Give it a press. And now I'm going to do my last section right there. Fold it over. I'm making sure that I'm not going over the bend. Right at the bend, even with the bend. Make sure that you're even top and bottom. Okay, everything I did on this side, I'm now going to do on the other side. So this side has all my bends, this side does not. So once again, I'm taking the end, I'm bringing it up to the middle, checking to make sure that I'm even, both top and bottom, sliding over. And I kind of hold this section when I'm pressing here because sometimes it moves. So just double checking, yep, I'm even. Okay, now I'm going to fold here over to the first bend here, even both top and bottom, pressing and then folding with my bone folder. So there's my next section and now the last section, bringing it over right to that first bend. And I'm not worried right now 
about whether I'm folding in or out because that doesn't matter right now. I'm just making sure that there's a crease. Whether your crease is on the inside, the outside, that doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. Okay, so now this entire section is creased. I've got a crease, a crease, 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 crease. And I've got two strips like that. So now I begin to make my pages. So I'm going to take my glitter glue and glue my pages. Now, I need an end page. I need an end page for my cover. So I'm ignoring this end page. I'm just ignoring it. What I want to glue together is this first section. So on the inside, again, ignoring the end page, I'm applying glue and I'm pressing together. And some glue may squeeze out, just wipe it off. So there's my first section. I've still got my end page. And now I need my second section. So I'm gonna fold that together and glue. So that goes together. So now I have two pages. So there's my end paper and there's my one, two pages. So I'm just going to keep going. Do my next section. And put it together. And what you'll find that you have is you will have two pieces on the end like that. You'll have two pieces and three pages. So it's almost like you've got two end papers, but you don't really, because what we're gonna do is add another strip so that we have more pages because a book with three pages is a bit skimpy. We want more than that. So here's my end paper to the right. That's my end paper, nothing's glued to it. This, I'm going to glue this strip. So what I'm gonna do is take the end paper of this strip, this one right here, and I'm gonna glue it to that. And I'm gonna make sure that they're nice and even. So here we go. So that's just one page. I'm going to apply glue. gluing this to it. So basically, if you remember that every page is a doubled up page, every page is really two pages. Make sure you, when you do this, you're even. I did not do that. Okay, now I'm, now I'm good. Give it a press, make sure it's really together, make sure you're even. Okay, and now I'm just gonna keep going like I did before. So here's my end paper. It doesn't have anything glued to it. It's right there. I now have another page, those two pages that I glued together. And so now I'm just gonna fold and continue creating pages. So I'm gonna fold it that way towards me, apply glue. Give it a press all the way around. I'm using glitter glue. It's my one of my favorite glues to use with paper because it has a low water content so the pages don't wrinkle okay see now here's a good example all my pages are fold different ways but it doesn't matter because I know I need to have it facing out to make a page of my book so next page Oh, 
think we'll put a clue in there as soon as we just press them together. Over my end page is right there. And now I've got one more page that I can make, and I've got another end paper. And that's how you want to end up. So let me glue my last two pages. Last two pages are glued now. I've got my two end papers. End paper here. Let me just, I'm going to press the whole thing together so you can see. So here are all my pages. I have an end paper and an end paper, and that's what's going to glue to my cover. But I'm just pressing, I'm making sure everything's even because if it's not even, now's the time. looks pretty good. All right, so there we go. Here are my end papers. Here are my pages. Now I'm going to prepare my cover. So those are my two pieces of cardboard. Let's see. Just decide which way you want your book to be up. I think I want it to be like that. Um, let me just put the other side. Yeah, same thing on the other side. So my pieces of cardboard are just, just a hair bigger than what my pages are. So my pages, let me just show you with my ruler, if I can see. Where are my inches? Yeah, my pages are an inch and a half by an inch and a half. No, it's an inch and a half by let's see, an inch and a half. Yeah, an inch and a half by an inch and a half. It doesn't matter if your pages come out maybe an inch high, an inch and a half wide, or two inches high, two inches wide, or two and a quarter. None of that matters. The only thing that matters, regardless of what size your pages are, is that your cover is the slightest bit bigger because you don't want your pages sticking out over your cover. You want them to be just a hair larger. So that's how you're gonna cut them. And I often will just stick this on a piece of cardboard and mark it off with a pencil and do it that way. So once I get my two cardboard pieces, then, I am ready to glue them down. It's important that you get the cardboard even because if you don't, then your book's going to be wonky. So I'm gluing this down with a little bit of room at the top, a little bit of room at the side. That's that's really too much room. And then I'm looking at my spine, how wide my spine is. And you can even do this. You can kind of measure your spine and put your other cardboard down next to it. And that'll tell you how big your spine needs to be. So about that big, right? Okay, so I'm gonna glue my other piece of cardboard down. And I'm gonna leave room for my spine. That much, I'm making sure that my cardboard pieces are even. And when it looks like they're even and the spine is even, then I'm going to cut off the extra paper. So here we go. Just gonna trim around. 
I'm leaving maybe not quite half an inch around. That's a little too much on that side, so I'm going to trim that off. Okay. And when you're done, that's all you need. That's all you need around your cardboard. Okay. So if that's your cover, then you're folding to the inside. So the first thing you're going to do is just fold. We want to kind of train this paper. So you're folding. And I'm going to do that on all sides. I'm folding, I'm making a crease. All four sides need that. Same thing on this side. Okay, now that I have all four sides folded, I'm going to look at my paper and you'll be able to see that when you fold it, you've made like a little square on every corner. I'm going to cut that little square off because it's going to make our pages a little bit bulky. Now, where do I cut it off? When I get to the cardboard, um, I'm not going all the way to the cardboard. I'm not going all the way because we, we still don't want the cardboard to show. So see, that's the square that I'm cutting off. If you look at that, there's a little square cut in the corner. I'm going to do that in every corner now. I'm just folding again so I can see that little square. Cut. I'm not going to go all the way to the corner. I mean, all the way to the cardboard. Okay. This side. I just want to get rid of the bulk of those papers. And last one here, and one more little corner here. Perfect. Okay, that's what it should look like after you cut off all your corners. It should look like that. Now we can begin to glue. So I'm just going to go along. Through this side, move it over. Over this side. Move over. I'm going to go to the bottom. I see that that right there feels like I could have cut it a little bit more. So I'm just going to trim just a tiny bit there. And a tiny, tiny, just like the tiniest sliver there. Okay, now I'm ready to fold over the top. Okay, now the top folds over and I'm ready to get my book in there. Okay, now you don't want to, this paper is very tight right now because it's got glue on it. You've just folded it, so it's very tight. You don't want to just close it up. You want to ease it in there. So I'm just little by little going on each side and folding that up that's my spine and if i quickly fold it up i'm going to tear okay so there we go i'm just pressing that right there 
pressing on the other side. And now I have my book cover. Now that I have my book cover, I can glue my signatures into my book. But as you know, I want a tie on my book. So I'm going to now put the tie and the tie goes underneath the end papers. So this seems to be the easiest way to do it. I'm sure there's lots of ways that you can put a tie on your book. This is one easy way for me. I want the paisley to show. So I'm gonna flip that backwards so that the pattern is on the outside. I'm gonna put some glue, whoops. I'm gonna put some glue here for my tie. Let's say about halfway over seems to be enough to you know really make it secure. So I've got my tie halfway over. Giving it a good press. I'm gonna get my tie on the other side now. I really love, so I tore these off of a piece of fabric because I love how that looks. I love the loose threads. I love that kind of shabby look to it. Go about halfway over. Give it a press. Okay. So both my ties are glued on. Now it's time to glue the end pages. So I'm gonna start with one side first. I find it's better to do one side and then the other side, because if you need to move or make some adjustments, you haven't glued them both down. So I'm starting by putting my book in the spine, putting that on and I'm making sure I'm not sticking out anywhere, wiping off any extra glue. Am I centered in my spine? I am. I'm centered so I don't need to move it. I just need to pull this up a little bit. Come up just a tiny bit. See, it's much easier to adjust. You just have the one on. Okay, I've got a little bit more room. I can pull that up a bit more. Okay, that's good. And now the other side, I'm just gonna flip that over. Glue, make sure your tie is out of the way. Don't put glue in your spine, don't do that. The glue only goes on the cardboard. Once you get to the edge of the cardboard, stop with the glue. One, it'll make it hard and impossible to adjust it. Two, it'll make it hard for your pages to turn. So do not put glue in your spine. And now when I glue this other side over, I'm making sure that my page is on the spine. I'm not too high, not too low. I'm closing and pressing, giving everything a good press. Look at that, beautiful, looks just like a real book. It is a real book. It's got pages, it turns. Okay, so there's my book. And even though I have painted pages in here, you can do mark making on these pages. You can take your gold pen, your black pen, and do some beautiful mark making. So 
there we go. It's, you know, it's that time of the year where we give gifts for the holidays. This is a beautiful gift to give someone. Everyone loves these tiny books. I like long ties because I like this idea of wrapping them around and then tying them. It just it feels great to have a lot of fabric on there. And then you can just tie it. Just like that. What a great gift. Anybody would love that. So I've been obsessed with making these lately uh, because I recently went somewhere and got some the sari string and I did jelly plate printing. It was just me and Saba on Monday, but we had a blast and we had all these papers and they're beautiful, beautiful book papers. This is one of the jelly papers that we printed. And I was able to add gold to it. And that just those little touches of gold made all the difference in the world. So these are really fun to make. Really fun to give as a gift. I've got three. And I'd say maybe in these three, less than 30 minutes, that's three gifts in 30 minutes. Um, I'm also experimenting. Well, I'm going to experiment with doing old book pages in these books instead of the painted papers. But I do love the painted papers. Okay, so that's what I have for you today. A nice evening, everyone. And um, don't forget to look at the calendar for the supply list. Take care, bye.